In this guide, you're going to learn how to attack move and kite like the pros. We'll be taking you through the basics all the way to the most advanced concepts. But first, let's do a quick rundown of what attack moving actually is. Attack move is a command in game that essentially lets you click on the ground to attack the nearest target. This has a wide range of benefits. It prevents accidental death, since if you just do a regular right click to auto attack an enemy, if you miss, you'll click the ground beside them, causing you to walk forward, which usually results in your screen turning gray. It's also necessary when face checking brushes to prevent you from getting brush juked. By attack moving into the brush, as soon as you see the enemy, you'll instantly auto attack them without having to actually click them. Unsurprisingly, many people are actually confused by the term attack move, because it often gets used interchangeably with terms like kiting, even though technically they're different things. The term kiting has to do with inputting movement commands between your auto attacks. This allows you to create distance while still doing damage. Attack moving is the specific command that allows you to attack the nearest target if you click on the ground. However, when players kite, they use the attack move command to make it easier, and so because the attack move command became an integral part of kiting, the term attack moving gets used interchangeably with the term kite. I just wanted to clear that up since I know some people understandably get a bit confused by these two terms. Moving on though, the best way to understand how attack moving helps you kite better is by breaking things down into levels. The first level of kiting involves only using your right click. You right click on the enemy to auto attack them, then right click in the direction you want to move, then right click on the enemy, right click to move, rinse, and repeat. And this is a good time to really go into detail on the fundamental mechanics that go into kiting as most players don't fully understand what's going on here. Firstly, you need to understand that your auto attack has two parts to its animation. The first is your wind up. This is the entire animation up until you release your auto attack projectile or apply damage if you're a melee champion. The second is your wind down. This is the remainder of the animation that continues after you release your projectile. To kite effectively, you actually want to cancel the second part of your auto attacks animation with a movement command. So we right click on an enemy, our wind up animation begins, the projectile releases, and that's when we want to use a movement command to cancel the wind down animation. This is how you get that fluid, fast movement between your auto attacks without losing any damage in the process. Now, the second most important thing is that you need to start thinking of your auto attacks like an ability. Let's use any Q as an example. If we cast any Q, we know we're free to move as much as we want until the Q comes off cooldown. Then we cast it again. The lower the cooldown on Annie's Q, the less we can move between spell casts. It's the exact same concept for your auto attacks, except instead of a regular cooldown, your attack speed is your cooldown. The lower your attack speed, the slower you attack, and thus, the longer you can move between auto attacks. The higher your attack speed, the faster you attack, and thus the less you can move between auto attacks. Attack speed is also unique in that it also changes the speed of your wind up animation, meaning you'll release your auto attacks faster the more attack speed you have. And so you need to become familiar with kiting at different attack speed levels, as this will change your timing and how often you want to cast movement commands. Great, so you've passed level 1 and now have the fundamentals down. Let's move on to level 2 where the attack move command comes into play. You want to apply all the concepts learned in the previous section. By default, this is bound to the A key. By hitting A, you'll bring up a more precise cursor and then left click to auto attack. Again, the value of this attack move command is that if we miss the enemy, we'll still attack them instead of moving into them. Now, there are actually quite a few settings you'll want to have enabled to get the maximum value out of this command. Firstly, go into your options, then interface, and enable show attack range. This will create a circle around your champion showing your auto attack range when you press A. This is extremely helpful at making sure you're maintaining your maximum distance from your opponent. Another important setting is found in options, then the game tab, and enabling attack move on cursor. Having this enabled will mean when you attack move on the ground, it attacks the nearest enemy from your cursor. When you disable this, you'll attack the nearest enemy from your champion instead. You really want this setting enabled, or you'll be unable to auto attack targets of your choice, constantly forced to attack the nearest enemy, which is far from ideal. Now, I know some of you are wondering if you can rebind this to a different keybind, and yes, you can along with everything else we'll be talking about, but we'll be breaking down bind recommendations at the end of this guide, so make sure to watch until the end. So, with this setup, you can immediately see the value attack moving adds to our kiting. We can see our maximum auto attack range, we can get a better mouse cursor that can make us more accurate, and if we do misclick the opponent, we'll still auto attack them anyways instead of walking forward. It is worth mentioning too that this is by far the most popular method pro players and challenger players both use. However, there is one downside, and that's the fact that we're using two inputs for one command. What do I mean by this? Well, let's say we only right click to kite, like we learned in level 1. We would be inputting one command, our right click, to cause one action, the auto attack. 
When we attack move, we're inputting two commands, first the A key and then left click for one action to auto attack the enemy. Two inputs is obviously slower than one, and in a competitive game like League of Legends, being faster is an advantage. This is where level three comes into play. This involves the player attack move click command. This is the exact same command you just learned in level two, but instead of having to press A and then left click, you can just press A by itself. What this does is allow you to attack move while not slowing down your inputs, since you'll be casting one input for one action. By default, this will be bound to shift plus right click, and you'll want to rebind it to a single key if you want the one input advantage. You can also get the same speed advantage by going to options, then hotkeys, and enabling bind auto attack move to left click. This allows you to attack move with your left click, which is only one input. This will introduce some strange interactions, like left clicking on your minimap will cause you to move to that location, so you'll want to go to your options, then interface, and disable allow minimap movement in order to fix this. So, now that we've gone over the three different levels, you're probably wondering, which setting should I be using? The answer is, it's completely player preference, and no, that's not a cop-out. There are pro players and challenger players that don't even use attack move and only right click. Sure, they're the exception to the rule, but they do exist. With that being said, the vast majority of challenger players and pros will use A plus left click with range indicator on, despite it being slower, with the additional input cost, it greatly improves accuracy, control, and has a plethora of benefits that outweigh the negative. It also happens to be what we here at Skillcapped recommend that you use. As for level 3, the most advanced mechanic, this is commonly used by challengers or pros who are trying to push themselves to the next level and get any advantage over the opponent. They want the benefits of the attack move command while keeping it at one input. The point is though, that although in theory one technique may be more optimal than another, you need to factor in what feels comfortable and natural to you. For example, our challenger AD carry experts Sixax and Evnis both use the standard A plus left click with player attack move, the standard level 2 method we just went over. Myself and Japanese import who have both achieved challenger for multiple years prefer to use shift plus right click with player attack move click, a variation on the level 2 and level 3. And McBase, who's also been challenger multiple years, is a complete sociopath and just uses right click and doesn't attack move at all, god bless his soul. The point is, you need to experiment and try different methods of attack moving to find what works best for you, although we will have specific recommendations at the end of the video. Okay, so now that you've mastered attack moving and kiting, there are two last settings you need to be aware of that can make you a better player. The first is called target champions only. When you press this, you can only auto attack an enemy champion, meaning no more accidentally auto attacking a tower, minion, or jungle camp that's in the way. It also lets you sneak into jungle camps without taking aggro. By default, it's bound to the Atilda key, so you probably want to rebind this to something more comfortable. Most high-level players also prefer to have it set as a toggle by going into Options, the Game tab, and enabling Treat Target Champions only as a toggle. This way, you don't have to hold an extra key the entire time you auto-attack. Another valuable setting is found by going into Options, the Game tab, and disabling auto-attack. This prevents your character from automatically auto-attacking when your character is standing still. A lot of players prefer turning this off since you feel more in control of your character, especially when you lane. But others, mainly junglers, prefer to have it turned on so that when they're looking away from their champion, their character continues auto-attacking nearby monsters. And this leads into one very important tip. Whichever keybind or attack move technique that you decide to use, use it for the entire game. Whether you're CSing, killing jungle camps, moving on the map, or team fighting, use your attack move command instead of a simple right click. This is the key to improving at this mechanic fast and building up the muscle memory needed. For example, if you only attack move in teamfights, well at best you're getting like 5 or 6 teamfights over the course of a 30 or 40 minute game. That is extremely inefficient practice, and you're unlikely to see any improvement. The biggest reason why players are able to master this technique is that they use it throughout the entire game. And finally, let's talk bind recommendations. First off, we highly, highly recommend against binding attack move to one of the extra buttons on your mouse. This is a common mistake players make. For example, if we bind attack move to the side of our mouse, well, clicking the side of our mouse is going to slightly move the mouse and make it harder to control. It introduces a lot of inaccuracy to your mouse movement, and so stick to keeping your attack move binds to your keyboard. Secondly, the keys Z to V on your keyboard are insanely good real estate for new keybinds. There are no important default keybinds on these keys, and they're easy and natural to reach. They should be your first go-to when creating new keybinds. As far as specific pre-made layouts for attack moving, these are the three most common. First, the default player attack move bind of A, an enabling show attack range, and attack move on cursor. This is the standard and most popular. The second option is if you usually rest your pinky finger on the shift key, then you may find the default player attack move click of shift plus mouse button 2 to be more natural. The third is rebinding A to player attack move click. 
This gives you the benefits of attack moving, but with one input instead of two. So you might be asking yourself why go to skillcap.com to improve when I could just watch YouTube guides or play the game. Well, let me show you. Let's say you're an 80 carry who's struggling to climb the ladder. Not only would you get over 55 site exclusive courses for AD carry, but maybe really what you've been struggling with is wave control in bot lane. Well, we got you covered with six different courses breaking down wave control as an AD carry. Not only do we have the largest catalog of guides for League of Legends in the entire world with over 1500 videos to watch, but these are then curated by the top coaches and players into courses on every skill and topic you need to master in order to truly improve and climb the ladder. If all of this wasn't enough, we haven't even touched on our catalog of over 700 smurf commentaries, where a challenger expert shows you how to climb out of your rank and you're guaranteed to get any questions answered by them directly. Not to mention, we're the only service to offer a rank improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using Skillcap, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. All right, and that's going to do it for this one. We here at Skillcap want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.